Well, I can't say it's going to be quiet in here. It's going to be actually pretty loud. How's it going, everybody? Jeremiah here from Babylon My Backyard, and in this video, we are going to walk you through how to build how to build a lettuce raft bed. These types of systems are excellent for filtering your water for your fish. Um, so we are going to just do a step-by-step -step on how to build this guy. We're also gonna be discussing this grow light we got from GrowStar. Um, I'm pretty impressed so far, but we'll be talking about it throughout the video. I would say that I did previously do a very detailed instructional video on how to build raised beds with barrels. If you need to know in a very step-by-step -step detailed way how to build this setup, I would recommend checking that out in the description below. That one's going to walk you through how to split this barrel also. The first thing we got to do is build a frame all the way around this. So I got to measure the length of the barrel and then cut boards that length. The next thing I got to do is attach those to the actual edge of the barrel right at the top of the barrel flush with the, the edge. And the best way I can find to do that is just to clamp it in place and then screw it from the inside. Next thing I got to do is measure across the two by fours so that I can cut boards to the length from the outside edges outside edge. For installing this one I'm just gonna make sure I'm flush on both of the edge two bys and then attach it flush to the top of the barrel. The last thing to do is going to be to throw some longer screws through the two by edges just to make sure everything's sturdy up top. Now that it's framed on the top edge I'm just gonna move into the greenhouse and build the rest there. Okay I'm in the greenhouse now and right here in this corner is where the lettuce raft bed couldn't sit. It's not going to be on the ground like this. I got to put legs on it still, but this is where it's going to be located. And right above here, I'm going to be hanging a LED grow light so I can have more growth in the winter months that I'm in. Before I get this thing all set up and sitting over here, I'm going to go ahead and hang the light up. I'm super stoked about this light. So I was looking into different LED grow lights for this greenhouse and I'll be getting more as I continue to expand things. This one had some high quality components that I was pretty excited about. And I was lucky enough that this company actually was willing to let me have a light to test. I will have a full review coming of this light in a later video. I just want to get this thing set up and running on something, but I will do a, a review for this light as I keep using it and test it and push it to its limits. Uh, it comes with some different stuff. I've got a timer that it comes with, so I'll be hooking that up and using a timer. It comes with all of the supports for above, which is pretty great. But the light itself is crazy. The, the weight on this thing is, and in this case, weight is not a bad thing. This is okay. You do need something strong enough to support it. Obviously, I'm okay in this greenhouse but the heavy duty gauging on the aluminum. And what's really cool about this light is it does fold up nice and neat, but then it opens up to that two foot by two foot. And you just lock that down with these. So for this video, let me go ahead and get this thing hung up. After we get that up there, then we can finish getting the lettuce raft bed set up over here. I'm not even going to have to worry about trying to be so exact about the measurement. I'm just going to go about the right distance so it feels like right about there because the lines are flexible so I don't have to be perfect. I just have to be somewhat close and they'll adjust. This light is heavy so I'm going to pull on these and give them a good jerk. Make sure that they don't come off. Okay, so the light has these straps here. So I'm just undoing that. On the one side, there is an adjustable strap so I can pull the lever and adjust and it will lock in place there. That's pretty cool and it's very important for my setup because I have this slant here. So 
one side is going to have to adjust down farther. The other cool part about that is that you can adjust it easier from the height of your plant. So if your plant's getting too tall, you can keep pulling it away from the plant. And I just need to hold this thing up while I clip these guys. So pretty simple. Everything's already put together for me. I don't have any assembly. Like I know some of these lights have assembly work that you have to do. This is not one of those styles. So now we're moving back to the lettuce raft. I need the top of that lettuce raft to be as high as possible because in the long run, it'll drain into a flood drain, but I need it to be just below the drain pipe of the IVC tote. So I'll probably go three foot. All right, I cut my legs up. Um, and what I have is the 36s, like I said, but then what I also did was cut one that was three and a half inches shorter because I'm trying to minimize the excess that legs are kicking out. So these will be tucked under supporting still, but they won't be attached. So I'm gonna put these guys together and then we'll attach them to the split barrel. Leg one. I just need to make sure that the side my bottom is on is flush with each other and that these edges are pretty close to flush with each other. Leg two. Now the easiest way to assemble this would be upside down. This ground is not very flat. It would have been easier to do it on the concrete. Because of the way I made these legs, I can actually rest these on the actual legs and still attach them. So not only did it streamline the distance it's sticking out, and I really needed that in this direction, so that's why I did the kick in on those ones. Because I do have just a little bit of a path here to get to this window, so the water's gonna drain. There'll be a pipe there, but I do need to be able to get to that window still somewhat. So the next step I have to do is cut two more boards this length and I'm going to attach them just at the base of this across here and then I'll put a support ring in the bottom. Next thing I gotta do is get my two inch line here. So this is my drain side. Water will come in from this side over here from the IBC tote. Okay, so uh, I got my pipe cut to the length that I need it to be cut to. And then I sanded this big taper on there. You can see more about all of this in the Uniseal video, which is in the description below, or in I throw this oil on there, and you want some natural oil, so you can use cooking oil, whatever you want to use, just make sure it's not like a harmful oil. So I, I will need it to have oil, or sometimes people use soap or something, so you can use something, just something slippery, because it's going to be hard to push this into this uniseal. So I'm going to put this in here, and I'm going to start putting pressure down on it. Broke through already. Now I'll just keep pushing it down. I want the top of this to be lower than the raft, which will sit right here by a, probably a little more than an inch. This raft system will not be set up to have oxygen bubblers in here, which is another way you can do that. This is the, the easier method of having a gap of between your raft, which sits on the frame and not on the water. So there's a gap and then the water and the roots reach down and touch the water. So you have to have a long enough start on your roots that they can reach the water. But they're going to continue to grow in the water. And then up top, there'll be tiny little sprout-offs that are pulling in oxygen for the plant. Now, the water itself is always very oxygenated. That's what the noise is that you're hearing over here. And this is all not set up right yet, but 
I'm trying to get going. Air pump pumps a lot of air into the actual IVC tote, which is also not full at the moment. It is currently quarantining a new koi that I haven't even introduced yet, to, even on Instagram, but he's in there. He's pretty skittish at the moment. When it fills up, it'll drain here, and it will drain into here, which will then drain into the tub down below, and then some pump back up and over and back into here. Yeah, so now that's set, we can go ahead and get the pump set up down here. I went with the utility pump with an auto shut off rather than a sink pump just because I didn't want a bunch of water building inside of the tub back here. I just wanted it to be able to come up a certain amount, kick on, and then drain all the way down. And this will go drain it down to about an eighth of an inch. All right. So my sump pump in here, make sure that it's standing up correctly. This sump pump is set up so that if uh, it gets to an uh, inch and a quarter or something deep, the pump will kick on. It'll go down until it triggers the release down button, which is a quarter inch, and it will pump for 30 seconds after it reaches that to try to clear the line. So it'll start sucking a little air, but it'll clear the line, and then uh, wait until it gets back up to an inch and a half again. It is going to be cycling often right now with this setup um, But when I do the flood drain bed That flood drain bed will hold water and it will build and build and build and build and then flush So it'll be longer cycles between this one will be cycling a lot right now so let's go ahead and start filling this and We'll watch it flow over drain into there and then that'll cycle, kicking it off over here. I do actually have legit lettuce wraps for aquaponics, so I I have made them in the past where just out of uh, some styrofoam insulation and just cut them and then drilled holes in them um, for net cups. Later on as I kept doing this I got some real ones. Um, this is obviously too big for this build, so I am going to cut this down right to this edge. I'll say the downside to the styrofoam style insulation wrap is that they're super messy and all the popcorn pieces come off. This is a little bit more compact and a little more dense. So if you do use styrofoam style or foam insulation and drill your own holes into it, you do need to be aware that it will be messy. This tighter cell is better because it doesn't make as big of a mess when you're doing this. The next thing I gotta do is notch out for where the water is coming in. Okay, so I've got my little cut marks here and here. Now for a little bit more. I have to go all the way to that spot. Ideally, I would use a hole saw over here right against this edge. Dark inside that you want. You don't want light to be 
showing through. If you get any light through, or if this isn't covering your whole pool, then you're going to end up with uh, the plants not growing very well, because obviously the roots need darkness. The plant needs light. It's important to make sure that your drain line that's going back into your tank is above the water level. If it's below the water level, you're going to start siphoning the water back into your pump tank. So you need it to be above so that it grabs air and doesn't create a siphon back. just unplugged the pump so I could see if I had a problem with the amount of water in the whole system moving would be an overflow problem in my total drain so everything is draining out of here which I've reached all that's gonna drain out of you know, still draining a little bit once this has reached its limit to what it's draining which is pretty close then under here, this one's going to reach its limit. I still have a lot left of totaling it up. A third full. And I've got that much water that's in this in motion throughout this system. Just walked in to put some of my starts into the raft and uh, as I was walking in, the timer kicked on, so I have this thing set up on the timer, but I'm going to get these into the raft real quick. So I have these little foam plugs, and the foam plugs, your roots sit into the plug, so the base of the plant itself sticks out, and then you pinch that in. There's barely any roots sticking out, and then you shove that down in. And I go a little lower. I'm hoping that those roots are touching the water, and I'll check in a second. Some of them are for sure going to. This has got nice longer roots. This is bok choy. Fantastic for a lot of Asian dishes. I use it in stir fry. I use it to make a Singapore noodle dish that I use this in. I grill it on the barbecue. It's like an Asian cabbage, but it tastes better than cabbage. Not that cabbage tastes bad, but. Real quick before we go, I did some testing with the light to see what kind of readings we were getting. With the PPFD, I was getting 273 from this distance. You know, it's going to work great for this type of plant. These will be somewhere between 200 and 400 is where we should be. If I were to try to grow tomatoes or something, then I would need a little bit more intensity. Now my DLI is running at 11.8 from this distance. I want to be somewhere between 6 and 12 for this type of plant. In my review later, I will check to make sure that everything is maintaining as it keeps running. So sometimes the lights can start, start losing their power. So I'll just be checking it after running it for a while. And then I'll also talk about that more in the review. Hopefully you guys liked this video. Hopefully this helped you out. If it did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We've got lots of cool builds that we're doing just within this greenhouse. Also, if you want to learn more about this light, watch for the full review. I'm going to test it for a while before I release that video, but um, do watch for it so that you can see if this is the right light for you. That does it for us. We'll see you in the next video.